Okay, so hopefully you went and did those problems on acids and bases, um, ice tables basically. Uh, and so now we're gonna go over how I wanna solve those problems. If you get the same answer, but you did it a slightly different way, it's probably fine. There's more freedom to these problems than maybe we're, um, we're accustomed to. Okay, so the first thing I like to do with a wordy problem like this is go through and find the important information and assign it to some variables. So here we see a concentration right there. Uh, and it says formic acid. So of course, I need to know what that is. Maybe you don't know off the top of your head, but I did tell you that this table gives you some helpful info. So here's formic acid and here's the formula, which can be written in two different ways, depending if you're thinking about it as an organic structure, in which case this H is the acidic hydrogen, or if you're thinking of it more how we write it in Gen Chem, which is the acidic hydrogen in the front. But either way, it gives you the formula, right? And so, um, you can just write one of these two and it gives you the Ka, so all important information here. And so we keep looking for more information. Oh, and the pH is 3.86. So we're supposed to calculate a theoretical K, or a, a, sorry, we're supposed to calculate the actual Ka from this reaction and compare it to the theoretical. So when you get it from the appendix, that's a theoretical value. Okay, so you're gonna compare your actual to that. You're doing a similar thing in the lab, right? So you're using pH to find a Ka value and then comparing it with what the book says it should be. Um, so in that case, the ones from the pH are your calculated values and the, or your actual values mean the same thing. And the one from the book is the theoretical. Okay, so um, first in order to calculate a Ka, we have to know what the reaction is. So the appendix giving us that formula helps out a lot because we know that that's the parent acid and we're gonna lose that first proton and we're gonna get a formate ion, which again can be written as this also. They mean the same thing. Um, organic acids are like that. Usually they are COOH, that's carboxylic acid group, like we talked about um, when we were talking about amphiprotic amino acids and stuff. So frequently we like to write it um, like organic chemists do because it shows how things are connected, whereas this format here does not. Um, but it is easier to find which one's acidic. So if this is our equilibrium, we're gonna, we're gonna have to use an ice table and define what our Ka means. So in this case, the Ka is H plus times the conjugate. And again, I could call this A minus if I don't like writing that all the time, that's okay. In which case the bottom would be HA, right? So that's what our Ka means. Um, and now we just have to solve for it. So our initial concentration we said was 0 0.010 molar maybe we hope, that's the goal. But we also have this pH here. So we know that pH is related directly to H plus concentration. So we can use one of our formulas like that um, to find out how much H plus is present. And so instead of assuming that it's zero, which we know it's not, when we measured the, the pH, it wasn't actually zero we can find H plus concentration. So the calculator says 1.38 times 10 to the negative four. We are going to assume that all of the H plus made came from disassociating from the formic acid. So that would mean this is gonna have the same value. So actually, if we were doing this as a normal ice table from, from chapter 15, I suppose the way that I would think about it um, is to really say, okay, well, initially we have none of these. The change to get to equilibrium is going to be to subtract X plus X plus X. And of course your equilibrium position would be that. So I can do that, but, um, as it turns out, H plus is X, right? And so we find the concentration of actually two pieces of this puzzle by knowing the pH. Okay, and so 
to do the final calculation, we're going to take our value of x. And so that is going to be x times x, which is just squaring that number. And we're going to use our simplifying assumption, because this is a very, very small amount. I know if I subtract it from 0.01, I'm still going to get 0.01. You can try it both ways, see if you get a very different answer. And if it's not that different, then the simplifying assumption is fine. Uh, so we're going to square that and divide by 0.01. So our calculated Ka, our sort of measured value, is 1.91 times 10 to the negative 6, right? So we're going to compare that to the one from the textbook. So we're looking at these two boxes here, and we're going to see if they're close. And really, to gauge whether they're close or not, you can actually do like a percent difference, percent uncertainty, or even a percent error. But really, we, we don't really care too much about the beginning numbers, because KAs do vary over a very wide range. What we want to look at is, is the exponents. So we think about this as the order of magnitude. So if you get a Ka that is on the right order of magnitude or pretty close to it, then you're good. This is two orders of magnitude off. So you know you have a two orders of magnitude higher concentration, uh, higher Ka than theoretically than you actually measured. So if our Ka is too low, that means I probably didn't start out with the right concentration of, of formic acid, so it wasn't made correctly in the first place. Okay, this problem, by the way, was taken from an actual student who I taught, and they came back to me and I asked, "Hey, what are you doing these days?" And this was one of the things that they were actually doing for an agricultural company. Okay, so here's another problem. If you haven't tried it, pause the video and go ahead and do that. Um, same kind of thing, though. All right. I'm not going to give you the answer to this one. I'm going to use this as a learning check. So go ahead and give it a shot and take a picture. Make sure you show me all your work. So even if you don't get it right, I can kind of understand what you're thinking and give you some credit. The only thing that's different between this one and the last one is it is asking for the actual concentrations of each thing, each species. So when you write your reaction out, this is an unknown acid, so it's going to be just HA. It, it wants you to tell what the A minus concentration, the H plus, and the HA concentrations are, are at equilibrium. OK, so this is a review kind of of something we did in Gen Chem 1. We did a titration experiment where you are ultimately trying to calculate how much hydrogen ion is present as a fraction function of how much acid was in there initially. So that's called percent ionization. So this formula shouldn't be new to you. This should be a review formula. Um, so try this problem really quick and, and see if you get the right answer, right? These answers are also worked out in your notes, but I do think it's helpful to see step by step how to do it and for you to try it out too. So um, from this problem, we figured out that the concentration of hydrogen ion and conjugate is 1.38 times 10 to the negative 4. So that just came from our prior slides here, from our value of, of x right down here. OK, so based on that, all we have to do to, to find the percentage is is take that number, because that's the concentration of hydrogen, and uh, divide it by the initial, and multiply that by 100%. So when we think about acids, they are typically very low percentage ionization. Um, most That's, again, because most of it exists as the parent compound. And so when we did this experiment in 141, your percentages were probably less than 2%, which is what we see here. Very low percentages of the parent compound become hydrogen ion. All right, so that means that weak acids are not as acidic as strong acids are. Okay, 